Welcome to Spectrum Protect Operation Centers version 818. In this demo, I'm going to show you how to automatically tier data from a disk container storage pool out to tape storage. And tape can be any of the different tape devices we support or VTL. And this will allow you to take the data that has become either inactive or that has been on the directory container storage pool for a certain amount of time and move it to less expensive tape or cloud storage. You can click on this learn more button and that will give you additional details about setting up the tier from disk container storage pool out to tape storage. Let's go ahead and get started. You'll go into storage and then into tiering rules. You'll notice all the existing rules we already have out there including one that already is going to a tape pool. In order to create a new tiering rule, you'll click on Create Rule. I suggest leaving the rule inactive until you've created the rule and all the subrules, so we will not turn this active yet. First, you'll pick your Spectrum Protect server you want to run this rule against. I'm going to run it against Aquafina. You'll choose your target pool, and this is the pool you want to tier to. And so in this case, we're going to set up to an LTO device. And then you'll choose your source directory container pool. You'll give the rule a name. Now this is going to be our parent rule that we're creating right now. It will be the overriding rule for all of the nodes that have data in this directory container pool. And after we finish creating the parent rule, we'll create a subrule. First, you're going to choose which data you want to tier. If you want to tier all your data, just inactive data, which means you have a more recent version of the data backed up, or if you want to just specify all of the data by subrule. So we're going to go ahead and tier inactive data. You can choose a threshold for how long that data needs to be inactive. And then you'll choose a daily start time. The daily start time should be after your backups have finished, but before you do things like copy storage pools. So we're going to choose around lunchtime, so I'm going to say 1 p.m. This is kind of the same time that you would normally do your migrations if you were utilizing your traditional storage pools. And we're not going to limit the runtime for this. You can limit it if you want. We'll go ahead and create the rule. So now you can see that this rule has been set up. If we go back to storage, tiering rules, you'll now see our new tier to tape rule. Okay, let's go ahead and create subrules for this by clicking on create subrule. For this rule, I do have one specific node that I do not want to tier out to tape. I want it to go to cloud. So I'm going to call this subrule to cloud. This will be for the inactive data for this specific node, and we'll just leave the age threshold as one day. We're going to add an individual client, and I'm going to filter on the age 24. And this will be the one client that I want to go out to cloud. So now if I go back to my tiering rules, I'll see that I do have one subrule that's going to cloud. Now if I want to add an additional subrule, in this case, I want a couple of my clients to go to tape. I want all their data to go to tape, both active and inactive versions. We'll set the threshold down to 24 days. I'm going to add an individual client. This is number 13. And I create the rule. Now if I click on my tier to tape rule, I can see the Subrules, if I click on subrule there, so now I've got my subrule to cloud and my subrule to tape active. If I did want to add an additional client to any of these, I can click on my client button. I can see all the clients that are out there currently. I can see this domain number 24 is going subrule to cloud, and I can see my domain 13 is going to tape. If I wanted to add an additional client to a subrule, I can simply click on assign subrule. And then I'm going to assign this to have all active data go to tape directly to. So now I have two clients going to tape. 
one client going to cloud and the rest of these will send their inactive data to tape after that inactive data is one day old. Okay, let's go ahead and make this rule active. Select the tier to tape rule, click details, and then click on properties. And from here, we will click modify, and then we will toggle the active button so that the tier to tape rule and all the sub rules are now active. Go ahead and click save. Okay, we are not going to wait around for the rule to kick off. So let's go back into the tiering rules and let's manually kick this rule off. So we will select the rule. We'll go ahead and highlight it here, tier to tape. Go ahead and click on the run now button and then go ahead and read the warnings and click run now at this point. Okay, it went ahead and kicked off. You can go ahead and see that it did start. Go ahead and click close. And now if you want to see the process and what happened with it, you can go into the active or completed task. So go into servers. And then for our specific server, go into the active tasks. And you'll see that we currently don't have anything running. So let's take a look at the inactive tasks and see if it's completed. And for the completed tasks, we see here the completion of this rule and the sub rules that went with it. We didn't have anything to tier because the tiering rules were further out. You can get details on the specific information by looking below and reading the specific activity log entries. Okay, let's go back to the main page for tiering, so back into storage, tiering rules. And if you hover above the tiering rule, you will see the status for each of the sub rules. This is a new field in 818. And in our case, for this tier to tape, everything ran through to completion. Let's go ahead and take a look at another Spectrum Protect server where we have some other examples of tiering to tape. On the bottom right hand corner of the overview page, there's a new section on tiering rules. If we take a look at it, we can see the information about any problems that occurred. And so in this case, we see there's an issue. If we click on it, we'll get exactly what happened for this particular rule. You can see that this sub rule did not complete. So if we scroll up and select that sub rule, we can see the history of what happened. And if we hover above these two lines, you'll see that the amount transferred was not equivalent to the entire amount that we had that we needed to tear out. And this had to do with the rule that was set up that limited the amount of time we had for tearing. Untwist the recent history, you'll see information here about how long it ran. You can see that it ran for four hours and even though it still had additional data to tear out, it was limited to the four hours as specified when that tiering rule was created. On this information page, you'll see that we do give the amount of data tiered over the last two weeks. In our case, we only did tiering for one day, so we just have one statistic showing up. And likewise, we only have one statistic for the speed over two weeks. But if you've been running this for a while, you would get the two week span. Another thing to look at in the tiering rules is that this error right here where it says unsupported. If you have a Spectrum Protect server that's prior to version 818 and has a tiering rule set up on it, it will show up as unsupported just because we had not yet implemented that status column. So the rules will still run, you just won't see the status of each of the sub rules in this specific column. Something else to note, if you're currently using protect storage pool type equals local to make a copy of your directory container out to tape, when you start tiering that directory container out to tape, that original copy on tape will no longer be valid you will want to use the backup storage pool command to create a second copy of the data that was just tiered out to the tape storage pool. 
In conclusion, IBM Spectrum Protect version 818 adds tiering to tape for directory container storage pools. This is in addition to the tiering to cloud that was introduced in previous versions. Tiering is supported with all the data or with just inactive data. And of course you can specify how old the data has to be before the data is tiered out. When we tier the data out to tape, we will first rehydrate it and uncompress it. If it was encrypted, we will leave it encrypted. You also have the choice to create parent rules and sub rules, and the sub rules can either go to tape or can tier to cloud. You can create one parent rule for each Spectrum Protect container, and then sub rules for the nodes inside of that container, where each node can belong to a maximum of one sub rule. As you're planning for tiering, do take a look at the documentation we've put together on tiering considerations. This does cover all different types of data and the considerations you should take into mind when you're setting up those rules. The documentation is both in the Operations Center as well as out on the Knowledge Center. Thank you very much.